Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's fun classic model kit review, we will be looking at Ravel Monogram's P47D Thunderbolt Razorback in 148 scale. This is monogram kit number 5242. The P-47 was a U.S. fighter bomber used in World War II. It had excellent high altitude performance as a fighter aircraft, and it was also used very successfully as a tactical fighter bomber. It was able to carry very heavy loads, long distances, and it was able to absorb massive amounts of battle damage and still allow its pilots to get home safely. In this video, we'll be looking at the built-up kit. We'll also take a look at the kit instructions and go through those. We'll talk about the detailing on the interior of the aircraft. We'll also look at the fit and clarity of the clear parts. We will look at the surface detailing on this kit. We will look at the color and marking guides and the decal options available in this kit. We'll talk about the fit of the major parts. We'll also talk about the detail on the smaller parts, including the engine and the landing gear. And I'll attempt to answer the question with all of the other P-47 kits available in 148 scale, is this Ravel Monogram Classic still worth building? Looking at the kit instructions, step one covers the engine assembly and installing that in the cowling and adding the prop. A nice feature of these instructions is that they have pictures of the actual aircraft and the parts of the aircraft to aid in detail painting. And though it's a one-piece engine with some careful detail painting, what can be seen through the cowling is acceptable in this scale. Step two covers the assembly of the cockpit and the detail painting of the cockpit, and then installing that in the fuselage and closing up the fuselage halves. Once again, the photos that are included are very helpful. With the limited parts count, the finish on the interior of the kit is very detail painting heavy. If I were to do this kit again, I would add a set of pre-painted photo etch seatbelts to dress up the interior. Step three covers the wing and tail assembly. The wings assembled just fine. I didn't have any issues with those. The tail planes went on fine. If we look at the finished kit, I didn't use any putty on this build and I didn't have any major gaps to fill. The second part of step three covers the installation of the tail wheel. Again, everything was straightforward here and no problems in this area. Step four covers the underside details, and that includes the installation of the main landing gear and the ordnance that goes on the plane. Once again, there's some nice photos of the actual parts that aid in finishing out these areas. I chose not to put any ordnance on the plane, but the landing gear themselves, they're nicely detailed, they fit well, and I didn't have any issues on this step. The final step in construction is step five, and that covers the cockpit transparencies and the armor glass and the optional pilot figure. The fit on the transparencies was great. I didn't have any issues here, and the clarity is certainly acceptable for the scale. Looking at the color and marking guides, there are two decal options for aircraft included in this kit. Both of these aircraft are olive drab over neutral gray. The first aircraft is from the 325th Fighter Group of the 15th Air Force that served in Italy. The second marking option is for a 405th Fighter Group aircraft of the 9th Air Force. Obviously, my aircraft is not an olive drab over neutral gray. I went with the first marking option on this kit, but instead of painting it the olive drab over neutral gray, I actually sprayed the airframe silver from a rattle can. So the markings on this particular aircraft aren't historically accurate. With that said, I really like the way the kit turned out. It turned out very nicely. One of the drawbacks of this kit is that it has the raised panel lines. And I know for some modelers, that's a deal breaker. And it was honestly kind of a turnoff to me at the time. But after I sprayed the airframe silver, I went back and weathered the aircraft with a mechanical pencil. I also used some pastels for the gun smoke and some exhaust staining. Then I brush painted certain panels a different shade of silver just to bring them out and pop them out. And I really like the overall effect that I got while weathering this aircraft. Even though this is one of my older builds, I really like the way it turned out, and it certainly looks good with the other US World War II aircraft on the shelf. In conclusion, is the Ravel Monogram P47D Razorback still worth building? Well, 
Even though there are much more modern kits available, this kit is very attractive on several fronts. First of all, it is inexpensive. It does have accurate shape outline. It also has very good decals. The instructions aren't bad. The assembly is very easy and very straightforward. It has very few parts to it, and I can certainly recommend this to newer modelers or younger modelers or even older modelers who are looking to get back into the hobby as I was when I originally built this kit. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built the Ravel Monogram P47D previously, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, Model on.